Yo, welcome to Kepner Spores. I'm doing the week four recap of the show and minor league. Excited to have you guys all here. I'm absolutely stoked about what's happening in our leagues. You got to know, I'm keeping you in the know what's going on. And uh, let, let's start off with uh, with the show, the greatest league in the history of the league. Let's recap. Oh, wait a minute. Before you, breaking news. Massive trade just pulled off right after week four was done. Uh, Funk Jam trades. Listen to this. Michael Thomas and Carrion Johnson straight up for Melvin Gordon to uh, Pete Carroll's gum, father, son, Pull off a massive trade. Now, I want you to know I have received an official complaint. Uh, someone feels like this is very lopsided. In fact, I've had a couple people talk to me and think that Peter's insane. Now, he would agree with that statement, so it doesn't really matter. But listen, uh, here's the deal. Uh, Jake is in a last place. He needs to do something. He needs to pull off a deal. Melvin Gordon hasn't played for him yet. One of the reasons why he is in last place. Getting Michael Thomas, who without Drew Brees, still has put up some good numbers. Uh, Carrion Johnson, who hasn't produced yet until this week. Uh, that's a good trade for Jake. Uh, Peter, on the other hand, uh, first place in our league. Uh, I think he's feeling pretty confident he's going to make the playoffs. This means that Melvin Gordon, one of his favorite players, is going to be uh, on his team as a keeper for next year. And will be producing. He's taking the risk and the gamble here. He's believing that this is going to to really take off for him. That's how much he believes in this guy. So I want to say a big congratulations to you guys for pulling off a monster deal. Just a reminder, I don't veto uh, trades anymore. In fact, if you want to make a trade and you think it's in the best interest of your team, go ahead. The only time I do that is if it's co collusion. Uh, and I don't think there is any of that going on here. I, in fact believe that uh, Jake uh, is trying to uh, compete and Peter is trying to compete. So there's no doubt in my mind about that. So I just say, well done, boys. No no vetoes. Uh, I don't care if it's lopsided in the view of everyone. It, we don't do that anymore. Let's get into the show week four. Uh, big, huge matchups. Speaking of Funk Jam, uh, first place, 3-0 versus uh, uh, Piggy the Beast. And he wins 88 to 81, massive win there, Pete. Not huge points by either of you, but it is what it is. Uh, Gurley Gates uh, lost, wow, lost again to uh, fell off the Wagner. Steve pulls it off. Listen, Steve's team is the walking wounded. How in the world did he win this game? Listen, he he started, and I got to go, go back real quick. He started Philip Dorsett. And Scantlin as his wide receivers and still won the week. Uh, good thing he spent so much on Fob on, on Gallman. That was huge. Uh, well done, bro. I mean, Indianapolis was your defense. Only scored you three. How did you pull this out? This is insane. Anyways, back to uh, the league here real quick. Uh, Sheepdog uh, put up pretty good points, 90 points, but lost to Uncle Rico. Trev, you got him, 121. 90, um, and then uh, Vic's Doggy Daycare, whoo, boy, you're on fire, bro, 112 to 96, beats the Saints, champ Randy, I don't know what's going on, you're, you're, you're in trouble, bro, oh, man, so that was the thing, and the biggest blowout of the week is uh, I beat Pete Carroll's gum by 35 points this week, 102 to 66, Jake this is what I this is what I love. Listen. Revenge is sweet. Uh, karma. Uh, you reap what you sow. I don't know what it is. But all I know is on Thursday night when the Packers were playing uh, the Eagles, which by the way, Packers should have won that game but lost. And if you haven't seen my recap, I, I do a Packers weekly recap on this channel. Check it out. Uh, but one of my concerns about Green Bay and our defense, as good as we've been. We have had real trouble stopping the run, and that was that was so evident on Thursday night against the Eagles. In fact, Sanders and Howard had great nights, but or had good night and great night. And of course, I left Howard on the bench. Twenty nine fantasy points on the bench. So Jake, out of the kindness of his heart, 
sends me a text message. I haven't talked to Jake in weeks, maybe a month. And all of a sudden, I get this random text. Thank you so much for keeping Gordon on the bench. You're welcome, I responded. I mean, what else do I say, right? Great. So I'll, I'll see what happens here. I mean, there's nothing I can do. I started Sanders. It's wrong. Seven points at 29. <sighs> Anyways, what happens is, what happens is, first of all, Jake's team doesn't show up again. He starts Melvin Gordon. Listen, listen, I appreciate that he's coming back. I appreciate these active. That was crazy. So I sent him a nice text message saying, hey, I guess I should be thanking you for starting Melvin Gordon this week. And he, he responded, it's a gamble. It was a gamble. Yeah, it was a gamble. You lost. Dude, that was awful. Anyways, uh, my my team uh, kicked some butt this week. Uh, I loved I loved my performance on my team. I loved Chicago defense. Scored me another 17 this week. Anyways, so that's the thing. Let's quickly go to uh, recap in the standings. Funk Jam, number one in the league, 4-0. Vic's Doggy Daker, Uncle Rico, uh, up there next, 3-1. Uh, look at Vic's Doggy Daycare, 456 points for this guy's team is on fire. Who's going to stop him? Um, uh, 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 myself and uh, Piggy the Beast, Felt Wagner, and Gurley Gates, I'm still shocked. We're all two and two, battling and out. And uh, then we got Sheepdog and Saints and at three and uh, one and three. And, uh, and, um, Matt, Randy, you're champ, and you're one and three. Like, what's going on, man? Are you gonna miss the show? Are you gonna get knocked out? Anyways, and Pete Carroll's gum, gum, you're uh, four and all. I mean, I wonder, did you like swallow your gum when you got that trade offer from your dad? Just wondering. Are you kidding me? And he's trying to run to the computer as fast as can, but I don't know. I don't know who won that deal, honestly. P uh, Jake, you gotta win this week. You're zero oh and five means you're out. Like, in my opinion, I mean, you could. Do the greatest comeback in history. Good thing you pulled off that trade. Okay, let's uh, quickly run over to minor league uh, where uh, Funk uh, lost to the Hogs, 188. Uh, minor leaguer, lifer, Mikey, you uh, you won 77 to uh, beat Sean, who was uh, had the worst score in the history of our league last week. Uh, uh, 77-54. Sean, you're in trouble, bro. Uh, then we got Purple People Eaters with the big, huge victory. Listen, he was he was worried, guys. He was worried, but he pulls out a massive victory. 108, tons of points against Scott and his beached whales. 103. And then I got destroyed by Knuckle Draggers. Are you kidding me right now? 119-99. Listen, listen. Matt, you keep proving me wrong. Keep proving me wrong. In fact, you, dude, are are killing it right now. And now I'll tell you a few reasons why this bothers me. Not only that I lost to you this week. Second is that you didn't show up to the draft, which is normal for you. Second, you didn't pre-rank, which is normal for you. Third, you let Yahoo pick for you which is normal for you. And guess what? You're getting rewarded for being not there and lazy. I'm just saying, it's just saying, and you beat me. You destroyed me. Now, want to know what the blow of the week is? John's Vikes gets a massive win. 39 point week, 76 points he scores and he wins. Think about this for a second. Against Ed's Disc Golf, yeah, with 36.7. 36.7! Ed, I don't think anyone could be worse than Sean's team last week. In fact, there had been no worse team in the history of our league than Sean last week. But Ed, you have won the title of being the worst team in a week in the entire history of our two leagues. 14 years, you're the worst. It's just true. Now let's go to your go to this score here. Let's just see. Tom Brady, garbage, 3.7 yards. Buffalo's defense was incredible. Odell Beckham Jr., garbage. T.Y. Hilton, didn't even play and you started him. Henry, 10 points, not bad. Royce Freeman, you started Royce Freeman, he got you 5 points. 
Jared Cook, two points. Ingram, who's had a good year, seven points. Kukowski, four points. Jacksonville Jaguars without Jalen Ramsey, just saying. Two points equals 36.7. This is the worst performance I've seen ever. Wow. So let's just quickly go to uh, our recap here. Uh, our standings, Knuckle Draggers 4-0. Uh, he's got the most points, 475. He's on fire. Hogs and Disc Golf. Ed, I don't know how you're 3-1 when you have performances like that, but you're 3-1, so, I mean, that's the good news. Funk and Minor Leaguer, myself, we're all 2-2. Two and two. Uh, Beach Wells, and the, the four-way jam for last place here, or the last playoff spot, depending on how you see it. Scott, uh, Ruben, John, and Sean, all at 1-3. and three. In fact, Sean, if you look at your points for, you only have 264 points for. That is awful. I don't know what, I mean, you've had 421, even if you had an average thing, you'd still be losing because your opponents, I mean, I feel bad for you at this stage. Honestly, I just feel bad for you. So let's quickly go to see who's playing, who we're all playing next week. I'm playing uh, Mikey, minor leaguer, five versus six. Uh, yeah, who's predicting you to win, Mike? Knuckle Draggers has predicted to go five and all against Scott Beach Wales. Uh, Ed, you got to bounce back, bro, but you're predicted to lose to Ruben. Listen, back-to-back -back games, Ruben. Listen, this would be awesome. Uh, maybe if Ed has another awful week, this will happen again for sure. Uh, Funk, number four, playing Sean, one of his mentors, one of his guys. Uh, Sean is uh, last place, dead last, and uh, you're playing uh, uh, Funk. So uh, it's predicting that Yahoo's saying that Funk's going to win. Hogs, Paul, you are predicted to lose to John's Vice. Listen, the two Vikings fans are predicted to get back-to-back -back wins. Okay, before we end the show, guys, something really important. Every year after four weeks, I like to do something fun. I like to check out what the top five players are in each position. I like to go through them. Just It's interesting to me. We've seen them play. We've seen some performances, some crazy stuff that always happens in the NFL. Um, and let's let's start off with the top five. And uh, starting at quarterback, number one, off obviously Patrick Ma No, Mc no, Lamar Jackson is number one fantasy football quarterback in the league. Listen, who would have ever predicted that? That's amazing. Patrick Holmes, number two. Russell Wilson, number three. Dak. Prescott, I've only played garbage defenses so far, has four. Wentz is five. Uh, who would have ever predicted these are your top five? Number top five of uh, running backs, McCaffrey, Eckler. Eckler's number two. Wow. That's not going to stay the same. <laughs> Gordon's back now. Three is Cook, uh, Delvin Cook. Chubb is four. Ingram, surprisingly, number five. Top five wide receivers, Keenan Allen, love having him in the show, destroying it for me. Number one, Godwin, uh, who? Godwin's number two. Evans is number three, had a monster th uh, week three, I believe. Um, and uh, so he's number three. Cooper Cup is number four. Julio rounds it out with number five. Tight end is uh, Kelsey, no, no, he's not number one. Ertz, no, no. No, he's not. Kittle, Kittle, Kittle. No. Those guys aren't number one. In fact, Ingram from the Giants is number one. Andrews from Baltimore is number two. Kelsey's only number three. I mean, he was getting drafted in the first round in a lot of drafts. Hooper, what? Who's Hooper? For the for the Falcons, he's number four. And number five, probably most shocking, Disley off of the, the Seattle Seahawks. Now... I want to let you guys know something. Every year, you fantasy experts tell you, don't take a defense early. Don't take them early. Now, I agree with them, except for in this instance. Listen, Chicago, they're the real deal. They're the best defense in the league. And, guys, they're obviously number... Whoa, this just in. Chicago's number two. The number one defense in fantasy right now is the New England Patriots with 86 points. Chicago only has 52 at number two, 
Randy, you have New England and you're one in three. How bad is your team? Think about that for a moment. Champ Randy. <laughs> so England, New England one, Chicago two, Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Like, are you kidding me? Number three, Tennessee's four. The 49ers is fifth. Four out of the top six uh, teams aren't even owned in in our in the show. So you just never know what's going to happen. I, I find that interesting. This is why I find it interesting. Is this a trend? Is this what's happening in the league? Are these the studs? Or is this a good time to sell high or buy low on players? I'm not really sure. But what it does is gives us a little barometer. Have they just played weak teams? That's very possible at this stage. We don't know who the weak teams are. Well, maybe now we do. And so this would give us a little interesting. Week four is usually when there's lots of trade offers. Week four and five going, people are starting to figure out what their teams need and lots of trade rumors going. I just want to encourage you. Again, no, no, we, we just pass through every deal. And, uh, and uh, I encourage trades. They're more fun to talk about. Anyways, thanks so much, guys, for watching. Hope you had a great night. And uh, I'll see you in week five.